This is Maria. And this is Hester. And together they are... The, the Concert Counselors! Today we are going to focus on how to create a good ensemble sound. And at the same time, the exercises we present today will help your ensemble to play better together. So that's a win-win situation. Firstly, we need to look at our own individual sound. And for that, you need to uh, evaluate how your airstream goes from your lungs into the instrument. And you can vary that airstream by varying your air pressure. And how do you do that? You can do that by changing the position of your throat and of your jaw and your cheeks and your lips. So let's see what happens if we play a bit around with all these different parts of the sound unit production of the recorder. And remember, we are showing you examples that are quite extreme, so that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to play in one way or the other in reality, but just so you see what the effect is. Okay, let's start with the throat. If you turn your neck a bit uh, softly around, then you will notice that your throat is relaxing. And if you play the recorder with such a relaxed and open throat, then you get this kind of sound. Then again, you can choose to create a little bit of tension and close your throat a little bit more so that you get more air pressure. And then it sounds like this. So that is the throat, and then we're going to move up and talk about the uh, jaw. And the jaw can sometimes be extremely low, and in that case you get very slow, very big air cavity in the mouth, and therefore very slow air stream, which sounds like this. Um, but if you bring your uh, jaw up and you bring your teeth closer to each other, then you get a more concentrated sound, which is... This, by the way, also gives you more control over your articulation rather than the very low position. Then we have the cheeks. Imagine, for example, that you want your uh, cheeks to really puff out full of air when you are playing. Then you need a lot of air to go through to really recreate that effect. But you can also keep your cheeks a little bit tense so that they don't puff out of air. And what you're actually doing to create that effect is use your lips. Because the lips can uh, also regulate how much air goes into the recorder. If you are playing with very relaxed lips, just going on the instrument but having no tension at all, then the instrument sounds like this. But if you create a little bit of tension to make a higher pressure on the airstream, then it sounds like this. these aspects you have to regulate and combine and play with to create your most beautiful sound. Yeah, and like that you have endless possibilities. Now we will start with some exercises in a circle. We sit in an open circle, but when you do these exercises with your ensemble, you can close the circle to have more contact. And as you see, we have here some amazing guests who are going to help us doing these exercises. They are a couple of students from the recorder department of the Amsterdam Conservatoire. Here is Gabriel from Spain. Here we have Margarita from Portugal. And here we have Patricia from Denmark. <laughs> to do this exercise, the best thing is that you all take the same size of instruments. So we all have here tenor recorders. If you don't all have the same, then take sizes that are close to each other so that you can play the same pitch. We are going to send a pitch, the same pitch, to your neighbor in a circle. And we do this by drawing the sound with your instrument, sending the pitch to your neighbor. And it's, it would be great if you could take over the sound and the intensity and the pitch of the first player. Let's do it. We are going 
going to repeat the very same exercise, but we are going to add some heavy rhythmical vibrato to our tone that we are passing on to the neighbors. And in this case, to show you the exercise, we are going to use four quavers. So we divide the long tone in four equal quavers or eighth notes. And now Hester is going to start and we go around the circle. going to count slowly until four and you can pick a pitch of your choice and we are going to make a vibrato in the same way we did before but now we try to end all together after four beats so the goal is to really lift up the sound and send it in the air after four beats pick a pitch one two three four Next step is we repeat the last exercise, but now instead of choosing any pitch we like, we limit ourselves to the pitches in the C major chord. So we can choose between C, E or G. And we come up with a new tempo and do again the same exercise. There we go. One, two, three, four. We are going to do the same exercise, but instead of heavy vibrato, we are going to articulate in 16th note values over those four beats. And the goal is that we try to um, give direction and shape into every next beat. So you try... Let's do again the same, but this time we are not going to give direction to every next beat, but we try to think over four beats. So we go from the beginning and we think of the ending and then lift the sound all together in the air again. I will count. One, two, three, four. The last step of this exercise is that instead of actually playing this subdivision in 16th notes, we are going to hear it in our mind, but we are just going to play a long note, having in mind the subdivision and the direction that we just heard in the previous example. And then we're going to stop together uh, and lift the sound up in the air, as Hester said before. One, two, three, four. For this series of exercises, you can also use different subdivisions. Uh, for example, instead of 16th notes, you can also use triplets or quintuplets or septuplets or whatever you want. <laughs> now we are going to do an exercise using material coming from an actual piece of music. And in this case, we have chosen the Galliard My Linda by Anthony Holborn. Yes, and we are going to play the first part in a slow tempo and we are going to play all the notes slurred so legato throughout and why do we do this to focus on the sound of each individual pitch that it has the same quality throughout so that it's not bursting of volume and dropping down in intensity but all the time the same let's try this <laughs> Let's go back to the tempo in which we actually want to perform the piece, but let's completely change the articulation and play pizzicatissimo. Yes, and that means that we are going to play as short as possible, as if you are jumping from one pitch to the other, sending the sound up in the air. Let's try that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we are going to bring together what we did in the beginning of the session and what we have been doing in the second part of the session. Yes, we are go going to play the ending of this part, the last two bars, and we are going to do the following. The final chord will be firstly divided in eight notes. We will play eight notes all the time, the three full beats. Then we will play triplets and then we will play 16th notes. And finally we will play normally as it is and we will try to imagine the 16th notes in our heads and lift up the sound in the air. <laughs> in the conservatorium van Amsterdam, the school where we also studied. And we were both studying with the great, great Paul Leenhout, who is also a founding member of the Amsterdam Lucky Stardust Quartet. And the Lucky Stardust Quartet really brought concert playing to new heights, they made it known to a wider audience, and therefore we are very happy to share that there is also a YouTube channel dedicated to the Lucky Stardust and we recommend very much that you go and check out their clips. You will find uh, some concert excerpts, some TV performances, uh, collaborations with other artists and some clips of their tours around the world. It's really fun and a pleasure for the ear. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have comments or questions for them, contact them here. See you next time! Bye! Bye.